Good morning, everybody, and welcome back. I am super excited to show you all how I built this geothermal cooled, solar powered water bottle fill station with, you know, an inverter for extra power for other stuff if you want. If you just kind of want to see how this functions, check the link in the description for a shorter video about that. If you want to see the full build, stay tuned. In either case, please hit the subscribe button because it's the easiest way to help out the channel so I can build stuff like this and the cooler, cooler stuff that I have planned for the future. So let's get going, show you how I made it. So like most EIB related projects thus far, you're gonna wanna start by digging a big hole. Four feet deep and wide enough to set a roughly 16 inch by 16 inch form inside of. I've really come to love the combination of a generator and an SDS Max rotary hammer over a traditional rock bar for digging. It is just amazing what you can go through with this thing and how much faster it makes it. Anyway, after much, much, much digging, you will end up with a very large hole, which is which is the first step to this project because you need that in order to pour the, the concrete in. So we'll get to the form next. Form for this project is made out of one four foot long, 12 inch diameter cardboard form tube commonly used for post footers. We're going to use this the wrong way. Usually you put cement inside the tube, coupled with a second form made out of some old scrap OSB, some brad nails, and most importantly, strap. We'll get back to that. After cutting your form boards roughly 16 inches by 17 and a half inches, using almost any tool as they don't need to be perfect, strap and nail them together to create a box. Put your cardboard tube inside that box and measure a section of fencing or other metal mesh for internal support. Now get back in your hole, but also bring with you some 2x4s or other similar scrap pieces cut roughly 18 inches by 21 inches nailed into a box as well as some other scrap piece of metal mesh material that you make into the shape of this box for your slab. Okay, connect the mesh from your first tube form to the slab form mesh. Then in a fairly awkward position, put that all in the hole, fill it with cement, and wait. After waiting long enough for your new pad to support weight, add your blocks and tube forms around the mesh and onto the slab. Pack in some dirt around the bottom, strap the ever-living crap out of your box form, and fill that puppy up with some liquidy cement as you periodically vibrate it with an old reciprocating saw. I say strap the crap out of it because I only used one and had a growing leak that required rapid backfilling and later me redigging my hole. Also. Add about a foot or so of packed dirt to the bottom of your cardboard tube on top of your cement slab or something else because the liquidy cement and the pressure makes that tube want to pinch and collapse at the bottom. So again, rapid backfilling saved me, but know this ahead of time. Anyway, that's it. You've effortlessly created a large concrete hole in the ground, and now you need to backfill most of that so we can go do the fun part. To create the pole that everything mounts on and routes through, I first started by designing and 3D printing a 45 degree cope cutting guide for the end of a 1 and 5 8 inch line pole. After coping the end, I cut that pipe roughly 10 inches long, leaving the other end cut of 22 and a half degrees. I then cut another pipe roughly six inches long, leaving one end flat and the other end cut at 22 and a half degrees. Then I cut a hole about 30 inches from the bottom in the main pipe section, which is an eight foot long piece of one and seven eighths inch galvanized steel pipe for chain link fence. After I had all those pieces, I welded everything together to make it look like this. After this point, I knew which direction my faucet would be facing, so I went ahead and welded on a bracket for the electronics box, cut a hole, and welded on a shortened male threaded section of a one inch metal conduit for the connection to the pump box from the main pole, and I cut a hole for the pump wire routing. Then I ground down all of the crappy flux floor welds I did directly on this thin walled galvanized pipe to make everything look good. Lastly, I pulled some rope through each of the portions that I needed to route the pump electronics and to route the water plumbing to the faucet. And then this pipe was ready to go in the ground and connect to the pump box.
After scrapping multiple variations of my original plan as a direct result of not drawing the entire assembly in CAD, I fixed the first waterproof electronics box with my soldering iron once I realized the water pump would just barely fit in it, and then I bought a second box to use for the electronics as originally planned. The electronics consist of a small inverter intended for use in a vehicle, a set that included a solar panel and charge controller, then a battery, a light, and some toggle switches. I first designed a mount for the inverter and battery to offset the battery in order to add the toggle switches to the bottom of the box, and to position and secure the inverter to stick through the side of the box into a waterproof outlet housing. Then I cut the box for the inverter and modified the outlet housing as well. Then I riveted the outlet housing to the side of the main box with its gasket in place and some caulk for extra water protection. Then I soldered a bunch of wires and crammed everything into the box with extensions sticking out for the solar panel and light. I drilled holes to mount it all to the pole, and at that point the main box was complete. And then for the pump box, all I did was kind of line the pump up, cut a one inch hole for a conduit bulkhead connector with its own little gasket, and then I cut a hole for a two inch bulkhead which I ended up making out of a coupler because Home Depot was out of actual bulkheads and I did not want to drive to Ace. Then I glued a PVC 90 on and mounted that to the pipe that's coming out of the concrete hole in the ground. That was it for, that's it for all of the waterproof boxes. Then it was just a matter of setting the pole and attaching it to the pump box and pouring some concrete to stabilize it. Then we could move on to all the final touches. So before we could actually get to all of the final touches, we had to address the faucet and the pump because these two steps both presented unique challenges. To start, the pump intake has two small wires inside of the water hose that turn off power when the bottle is empty. And soldering in an extension was extremely annoying and it required me to solder a whole bunch of the final stuff in place. I did a combination of heat shrink and a dab of liquid electrical tape underneath to reseal the connections for use inside of the water pipe and eventually got everything snug in the box next to the pole. For the faucet, I bought a metal exhaust reducer off Amazon and a small box cover plate from Home Depot. I welded the plate to the large side of the reducer, then ground everything down to look pretty. Then I drilled a hole for the faucet to stick through the plate that I just welded on. And then I drilled and tapped two holes on the sides for two small set screws to hold everything in place once it's mounted. After painting the new mount, I installed the faucet and made all the final plumbing connections and put that onto the assembly and in its place. A number of other tasks had to take place for this to come together. First, I had to vacuum all the dirt out of the hole from the main pour. Then, I had to build a nice little bracket for the solar panel that I'm quite proud of and mount that. Then, I had to mount the light, solder, and seal all the final connections, and build a lid for the hole with a rope attached to the jug. Now, we have a wonderful water station in the garden that rivals even my shop kitchenette with drinking fountain, link in the description. Here it is, the completed build that you've probably already seen, able to fill a water bottle or human mouth quickly with water cool relative to the surrounding air temperature. Also capable of charging your phone, running an intercom, or any of your other low amperage needs. Was it worth the effort? Only if you subscribe. <laughs> no, it's pretty awesome. So yeah, it was worth the effort anyway. And that's it. Stay tuned, and I'll see you in the next one.